Hey guys, this is Sam from Kingdom of Airsoft and today we are going to do a little RHOP installation. So, uh, let's just go over the things that I use to do an RHOP installation. Now, first component is one of these RHOP patches here. So these are the official RHOP patches pre-cut from Hunter Seeker. Very nice finish on them. They are slightly different material to uh, even the uh, the other stuff that you can readily get hold of. This tubing here, uh, almost identical, but not quite the same. Um, I've actually had slightly better results using the official uh, R-Hop patches. So uh, that's obviously required to do an R-Hop installation there. And today we're going to be doing it on this excellent, excellent quality barrel. It's an EDGI barrel, Edgy Custom Works. Uh, these are handmade barrels. It's a 280 mil with an inner diameter of 605. Um, and I'm not sure if we'll quite be able to. Uh... There we go. You can see the the internal finish on that is absolutely, absolutely mirror. Perfect. Very, very nice. These are are pre-lapped, so the internal finish is just flawless. Look at that. They've also got uh, a nice kind of deep cut crater crown on them, which again is, let's see if we can show you that. Bit of a pain to, to light up with the camera here. But uh, this crown here is a nice kind of gentle curve all the way in. So really, really top quality barrels. We've got a six mil square cut hop window, which is perfect for doing our R-Hop installations. Um, so I have some, what's this? Feels like 1500 grit, somewhere between 1000, 1500 grit um, silicon carbide lapping paper. Um, digital calipers. Nice little set square. This is a six mil steel rod. Uh, this is the three D printed one that comes with the uh, with the R Hop installation aid, which is this little doohickey here. That's just uh, to to hold the R Hop patch while you sand down the inner curve. Um, but this one is kind of 0.1, 0.2 mils thicker, just find it's slightly better for, for most of the barrels that I do. Let's see if we can get all the bits in the picture here. Some nice, fine needle nose tweezers. A couple of quid for a pack of three off Hobby King. Really, really top quality. And last but not least, a fresh razor blade. So this is unused. Uh, I, I use a fresh one for every R-Hop installation, and this is a 0 0.09 mil edge. So we'll go ahead and just open that up. So it's really quite a, a simple installation process once you once you know how to do it. Um, it's taken me quite some number of years to uh, to figure out all the little bits and the, the kind of optimal way of doing this by hand. So what we're going to do first is just measure the hop window there. So we're in and let's just lock that in place. So now we've got our measurement uh, that's going to allow us to very easily and very precisely cut our R hop patch to length if I can find it. Where have you gone? There we are. So, we've got nice square edges on that, and what we're going to do, we've flipped over our digital caliper, and this little prong here, that sets our length. So you can see that just, just lines up nicely there, and we're going to use our set square as a kind of a, a slide rule almost, 
So we're going to slide that in, make sure our, our hot patch is, is tucked into that corner there. And then we're going to take our razor blade and line that up against the edge of the set square until it meets the, the little prong on the caliper and then that'll be it all lined up. So the only thing you've got to do is make sure that this stays flush and pretty much upright. So that is how we make our cut. You can see that is perfectly square and just fits just right in there. Look at that. Um, and that, that is basically the hardest part is getting that to fit perfectly. So I'm not sure if you can see here, we can just discard that little bit. <coughs> so you can just kind of see, maybe if we use this as a backdrop. So we're sitting a little bit too high and I'm not sure if we'll get a look down the barrel with, with where the camera's sitting, but we'll try. Now I can see that's just protruding a little bit too much in... Yeah, you can just about see it there. The, 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 uh, these inner kind of edges are not quite lined up right. The inner edges are just protruding in just a little bit too much, so that's that's looking straight down the barrel there. So you can see the patch is protruding slightly too far into the hop window. So that's going to cause a lot of overhop, uh, especially with it sitting proud out of the top there. So we don't need our set square anymore, and we don't need our handy calipers. That's all the measuring done. And we're pretty much finished with our razor blade as well, so let's chuck you away. So now it's time for some sanding. So to take these inner edges off here, this edge here on the inside, and this edge here, let's bring that a little close to the center so you can see. There we go. So this edge here. And then this inner edge here, they need to be sanded off just slightly. So the way we do that is we put our patch down. So you can see it's facing the, the direction of BB travel along this patch would be this kind of along this direction here. So we push down, sand it up and down like this. Now this is kind of about a thousand or fifteen hundred grit lapping paper. We want to clean off the swarf very, very often. Otherwise, what you get is all of these little bubbles causing imperfections on the surface. So you can see that that is pretty consistent. See if I can see it now. <laughs> right, so let's clean off the swarf. Now, so that, uh, sanding it with the direction of BB travel along this way, that sets the height. And then if we turn it 90 degrees, so the BB travel would be this way. And then push down slightly and sand. That is going to get off those inner edges. That's, that's pretty decent. Now what we're going to do is clean off the swarf while I remember. I'll just check this in the barrel again. So I'm going to have a little look down the barrel here. So we're pretty close to being perfect. Just a little bit more needing to, to come off there. We don't really need to do much with the height after this. So BB travel is this way, 
and let's get this sanded down just a tad. See, we're, we're barely taking any off each time. Now, we're going to need to tidy this up a little bit, because obviously this method is not perfect. This is just setting the, the rough kind of dimensions. So what we're going to do now, grab our installation doohickey, and put that in there. Now I'm going to clamp this in a vise just off to the side here, uh, but this moving around this camera is going to cause all sorts of wobbles and things. So I'm going to do that quickly, but what I'll be doing is this will be in the vise like this. I'm going to put my thumb here just over the bottom and then with some lapping paper wrapped around this, I'm just going to sand away one direction just a few times until it's perfect. Unfortunately, my little vise here is screwed onto the desk away to the side. And my other one seems to have gone walkabouts. I usually have a little clampy one that can just sit here as and when it's needed. Now, let's get our lapping paper here. We'll wrap it around, just like that. Nice and tight. And I'm just going to tidy up the inner groove of this, cleaning off the swath every couple of passes. go. Now every maybe six passes I'll turn it around and go from the other end and just make sure it's all nice and straight. There we go and then to finish it off I'm just going to add just a drop, just a drop of silicon oil. I'm going to smear that over, just like that. And that is going to give us a much nicer, smoother, finer surface. Much more perfect. Clean off that swarf. You do not like it. And there we go. So I reckon this should be just about done. Hopefully you can uh, you can see that there. It's a very very smooth finish. Pretty much identical finish in terms of uh, consistency quality to the finish it comes with. Now there's a slight flare on one side, so we're going to put that to the opening. That just means there's no kind of hard edge for that BB to, to hit off when it comes into the barrel. So I'm going to have a little look at this. Hmm, I think we might need to take a little bit more off there. Yeah, we're going to need kind of need to take some more off. So back at it. Going to use the end that doesn't have the silicon oil on so we can work through this a little bit faster. Cleaning off that swarf and then flipping the patch around. done again so we're gonna check it in one last turn and one last set of passes so keep on checking it is easy to take off too much and you don't want to do that that's much closer to being perfect I reckon
might actually need just a little bit more. So we're going to turn it round again, keep on sanding it in one direction, cleaning off the swarf. Turn and sand and clean off. Turn and sand. clean off. There we go. One more time. Let's give this another wee look. Yeah, I think we'll call that a good one. So what we're going to do now clean everything off. We'll take our installation aid out and now I'm going to clamp the barrel in my vise just off to the side and we're going to I'll do this under the camera so you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to score just these flat edges here and here. Just key that surface so we can uh, get some glue on there. And we're going to use some uh, isopropyl alcohol with a little cotton bud. And we'll just give that a little clean and dry it off. And now we're going to do the same for the patcher. Let's hold it in the tweezers and dry you off, clean you with the alcohol and dry you off. There we go. So that's just going to remove anything that might cause the glue become weaker. Now we're going to use some Loctite brush on super glue. Comes with a handy little brush applicator here. Uh, it's pretty much the only glue I've found that consistently works with doing our hop installations. So I'm going to brush some on. Not too much, just just a little bit along the edges of the, the sides of the hop window. And then we're going to take our hop patch, flare it in toward the opening, and just gently push that down, keeping it nice and central. So we've just pushed it down like that, keeping it nice and central, and a bit of alcohol still down the barrel there. So we're just going to let that dry off to one side. Now, we're going to be using a Prometheus Purple Hop Rebar. My very favourite. So we'll open this up and I'll show you how to modify it to work with an R-Hop. So let's get rid of this packaging. Now I'm just going to use some handy pliers here, about a third of the way in. Just Turn the ends inside out. And then, oops, you ping back on me. 
So we'll turn the end inside out there. Now, this is what I call my magic screwdriver. So this is just the perfect shape for flipping these inside out. And then that holds it nice and securely on there. So this is a CK brand screwdriver and it's a Phillips head two. A little bit worn there. So our last use for the razor blade of the day, almost last use, one more thing after this. We're just going to cut off the nub here. It doesn't need to be perfect, just need to get most of it off. This only really works if you've got a fresh razor blade that isn't that hasn't been dulled at all. So you can see that's that's most of it off. Still got a little bit of of the nub left on there. So that is where our handy Dremel comes in. So we're going to set it to about 10,000 RPM. And we've got a fine sanding disc on the end. On our little flexible extender thing. And we're just going to sand this off. There we go. So now that's all sorted. You can see that it's pretty much perfect. All nice and flat. We can go ahead and just turn this the right way around. And that's it. So, the glue should have set on our barrel by now. Let's just tidy up. Let's get all of our excess tools away on the nice magnetic strip up there. Always good to have a nice clean work surface to, uh, to get going on. Now, we're gonna turn up the speed on the Dremel just slightly and hope, fingers crossed, <laughs> That the glue has set because what we're going to do is just dremel this off like that so if your glue hasn't set that patch is just gonna ping right off so hopefully we'll be fine there we go and that's it that is all there is to it. So you need to be very careful that you're not sanding away into the barrel there. So now what I do, just to finish it up, is clamp this in the vise and then use our lapping paper here Oops. just to go over it like this. Kind of pull it like that. It's hard to do with one hand. <laughs> Clamp it in the vise and take our lapping paper over the top like this. Probably takes a few seconds just to finish it off, make it look all nice and shiny. So, covered in brass dust at the moment, but if we take our alcohol swab here. Clean that off, dry it off there, just drop a silicon oil for the camera and that, that is one perfect R-Hop installation. See we're completely flush all around the top and we have just Tidy that up a little bit, get the wee bits of dust out of there. Just 
just a very slight protrusion on the inside. Let's use this to reflect that light back in. Just, just the slightest protrusion just on the top there, you see? Just a tiny little bit of protrusion in. So we'll put our modified pop rubber back on. Slides on nice and evenly. Chuck a beep down the barrel. Sorted. So this is going to need just a tiny little bit of pressure um, on the uh, from the hop chamber just to hold that all in place. So what we're going to do is grab this is a uh, some 70D sorbethane sheeting, just a little off cut here. So I'm just gonna cut that into a little rectangle like that. And that goes under a flat hop arm and applies the pressure just like that over the whole length of the patch. And that's it. That is how to install an R-Hop. Well, I hope that's handy, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, just uh, chuck them in the comments below, uh, or chat to me on Facebook, or via email, Kingdom of Airsoft, uh, I'm sure you'll find it on Google. And um, yeah, if you like it, give us a wee like, give us a wee subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.